Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is some advanced passing games. Now, conceptually, the way I like to pass guard is I like to pass the feet first, then I like to get upper body control and then pass the guard. The reason is most people expect you to try and pass the whole legs first. The problem is, as soon as you start passing the legs, they start framing, and the frames are the hardest thing to break through. Then what'll happen is, you'll see this happen all the time, where you're in your guard, you come past, you throw them out, and then he frames, and then he brings his legs back in. And then I come, I use all this effort to throw them, he frames, and then he brings his legs back in. I'm sure you've seen this a hundred times. The way I like to work is, I like to get past just the feet. The reason I get past just the feet is I don't want him to have a platform in which he can push me back. If he can get his foot or something, he can push me back, his legs are going to be stronger than my arms. He's going to win that battle. You know, whether it's a chest or anything, this is annoying. There's nothing more frustrating when I'm trying to pass and they keep lassoing this leg back in and stuff and getting this back in and, and pushing me away and stuff. So I try and get past the feet. Okay, it could be this position. It could be this position. I might feel my knees. It's all right, up to you. But I want you to get past the feet first. Once I'm past the feet, then what I like to do is I make, like to make him feel comfortable. Okay, I'll sit in here and I'll do my hand gripping deflection a little bit, but I'm not really attacking yet. So he starts feeling more comfortable and I start getting closer and then suddenly I've got an underhook. And once I have this underhook, he ain't getting that back. I'm nice and tied to him. Now if he tries to push me away, it's really difficult. Even like with his hands or anything and tries to push my chest away from him, it's hard. I'm stuck to him. And the moment he does, I start locking up. And then once I'm in this position, I just have to be aware of my balance. Okay, I can't let him get his feet back in, I can't let him push me away, but I can't let him sweep me as well. If I've got my arm locked under here, or an underhook, and he bumps me this way and I can't post, suddenly I might go over. So I've got to try and hold him as tight as I can, that he can't push me away, but as wide as I can, that if he tries to sweep me to the side, my elbow and my post is wide. Okay, once I have this, then all I do is I try and problem solve my legs to pass his legs. I'll be in here, maybe I'll just put one across here, start trying to pass, and then I secure him here. You can do this in a multitude of ways, but the exercise we're going to do to develop the skills to be able to pull this off is we're going to do hyper-specific positional sparring. The first game is going to be just getting past the feet. So Gina, you're going to come in, and your goal is to just get past the feet, and your goal is to not let him get past the feet, mm -hmm. okay? Past the feet, meaning he can't push you back with his feet, okay? Mm -hmm. His knees is fine. If he gets to this position and he, he straightens legs, I don't care. He can't drive me back. And it'll, it'll make more problems for him because I can start passing over mm -hmm. them anyway. But I don't want his feet to come back in. So first game is you trying to get past his feet. see you do a little bit more is I want you to see a, li a little bit more of just deflecting him and what it is it's a timing thing where I wait for him to try and put pressure on me and I just move him out of the way okay it's the, it's mm. the exact exactly what we're supposed to do when we do Toriana it's like you just move your body out of the way so I don't stop him from straightening his legs I just guide him through it could be underneath my legs over the top to the side whatever it is but I try not to let him get control of that, but I'm not using much energy. So you try and stop me for a minute, you know, I'm just sort of, see I'm just sort of guiding and pushing him away, and I'm just moving myself around, and that's what I want you to do. Go. That's a bit better. Now you have, I feel like you're using less energy now. Yeah. And after a while of doing this, what happens is you start developing the proprioception, the control to do this while you're thinking of the next part of this. Great, okay, that's good. And we would just keep practicing that until it becomes unbelievably comfortable that you don't need to focus on that and you become very efficient doing it. The next step is once we have passed the feet, now we need to hold this position. So your goal now is to just hold yourself past the feet and your goal is to get your feet back into the game, mm -hmm. okay? Good. Okay, 
Alright, you got his feet back in, we start back in. Good. Nice, okay, pause. So anytime he gets his feet back in, we just start back in there. Mm -hmm. What I want you, I want to talk about, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's good to have like in control of the of the, the ankles and stuff, but sometimes what's better is by blocking the thighs. You see, for him to get this foot back in, watch how far forward his thigh has to go. Get your foot back on my hip. Ah, uh -huh. you see how that to move that far? Mm -hmm. Okay, try and get your foot on my chest. Mm -hmm. See how far it had to move then? So if I block this thigh and this thigh, now try and get your feet back in. It's much harder, isn't it? It's harder to get those feet back in. So by doing this, it's so much better because I, I require far less energy. Plus what it allows me to do is I can, instead of using my hands, I can start using my arms, which means my hands can come here. My hands can start fighting the hands and stuff like that. And my elbows are blocking those legs. So I can start doing two things with one limb, if that makes sense. Come and try that. So we start past it, yeah, start past it. You don't need to pass it, you've already passed it. So we start, already past. it. Yeah, here, go from there. Good, good. Just yeah, block the thigh. See how that feels. I just went Yeah. And now once you feel comfortable with that, then you're going to start thinking, well, I'm good with the hands. Now I'm going to start trying to use your, your forearms and your elbows to block those thighs. Okay, so use your elbows on those thighs. Yeah. And that way you can start reaching down with your hand to start getting control of the body. Perhaps you'll stop him from inverting and stuff. Great, great, awesome, good. Now the next step is once we're here, the next step is trying to create, get uh, upper body control. Okay, and this is gonna be the hard part because in this situation, he knows I'm trying to get upper body control. My goal when I'm normally rolling is I don't want him to know exactly what I'm doing. The reason why this is so effective is because he feels safe. But in this situation, it's gonna be far more difficult because he knows I'm trying to get upper body control. But if you can get good at getting upper body control here, when it comes to rolling, you're going to destroy people. So your goal now is to be here, and you're going to try and get upper body control. This could be double underhooks, one underhook, overhook, cross face, whatever it is. But I want you to be able to pin yourself to him and try and get chest to chest. It's going to be hard, but I want you to start developing the skill by trial and error. 